this technical demonstration, we're going to add some security roles to our users who are going to be involved in the auditing process. This is going to start by establishing our master auditor. Now, as you can see here, I'm in the audit manager and I do have a section for audit roles and one that's predefined is my master auditor. And since Alex Foster is the, the person who installed the audit and monitoring service, he was automatically added to the master audit role, but I can add others. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to add one additional master auditor. And this is going to be Kim Rogers. So I'm going to go ahead and select Kim Rogers and add her to the master auditor role. Now, keep in mind, the master auditor role is going to have access over everything within the audit and monitoring service. We don't want this. We want to create a secondary role for our auditors who are going to simply review sessions. So we're going to go ahead and right click on audit roles and we're going to add a new audit role. So this one will be for Unix systems. So we'll give it a description, auditors for all Unix systems. Keep in mind, you can set up audit roles based on region, because remember, in some cases, depending on the region, they may have different rules and compliance regulations that require data to remain localized, which means your auditors need to have access to that data, and they may also have to be localized. So you can do this as a regional um, type role. You can also do this based on machine type or any other organizational practice that your company is required to do. For this demonstration, we're just going to do this based on machine type. So I'm going to select Unix system auditors. We'll click next. We'll need to specify the access. So I'm going to uncheck the Windows sessions and we'll go ahead and click next. And now I need to determine what privileges this particular auditor has. So I definitely want to make sure they have read permissions. They do need to update statuses and they can do a replay, but I don't want them to delete. So I'm going to remove that option. The master auditor can go through the delete process during their maintenance windows or during the time when we move sessions from an active database to an attached database, for example. So this is all this auditor requires. So we'll go ahead and click next and we'll click next once again. And we'll assign users and groups at this point to this audit role. So I'm going to click finish. And I'm going to select my Omicron auditors. So I'm going to filter this. And I'm going to select my auditors group. We'll go ahead and click OK. And now I have a Unix system auditor, which is applied to all of my Omicron auditors group. Now we'll do the same thing once again for Windows servers. We'll go ahead and right click add an audit role. We'll go ahead and click next. This one will be just for Windows sessions and we'll click next once again. We'll do the same thing here. They don't need access to delete and we'll click next and next once again. We'll assign users and groups to this audit role. We'll filter based on Omicron. Now, in this case, my DBAs, my Windows DBAs actually have a dual role in my organization. They're not only Windows DBAs, but they're also auditors. So I'm going to go ahead and select that group and click OK. So now I have two audit roles and my master auditor has access to everything. So now that I have my roles in place, we can now go through the process of reviewing sessions.